Thank you, Rahim Rashidi with Kurdistan TV. What do you think of the Kurdish future on the Middle East? And in your opinion, what are differences sporting KRG and Kurdish territory in Syria or Rojava? Thank you. Well, as a Kurd, as a Turkish citizen, of course, uh, this is an important question. You know, Europeans fought 100 years, a war that lasted for 100 years, and then they fought the First World War, and then they fought the Second World War. Millions and millions of people lost their lives. Now we're talking about 28 nations, maybe many more ethnic groups, many more religious groups or whatever different sects. And after all that carnage and wars and stuff, Europe got together, formed a union, eliminated borders, you know, has a flag, a parliament, single currency, now a banking union. The problem is, of course, right now there is so much dust in the air, there is so much conflict, there is so much tragedy is going on. It's very difficult to foresee anything along these lines. But the best future for Turkish Kurds would be, I mean, for, from my own perspective, the best future for me would be a more democratic, a more tolerant, a more prosperous Turkey that is part of European family. And that would be the best for Kurds and Turks and everybody else. Sadly, with all this violence, right now, let, let me give you one more point. If you go to Iraq, I don't know much about Iran, but if you go to Iraq, if you draw a line, let's say below Kirkuk or Mosul, there are no Kurds. If you go to Syria, except the stretch along the Turkish border, including Rojava, there are no Kurds in Damascus. There are in other places. In Turkey, the biggest Kurdish city, city, the biggest Kurdish city, is not Diyarbakir. In fact, the world, world's biggest Kurdish city is Istanbul, Ankara, Izmir. My wife is a Turk. So, Turks and Kurds in Turkey are inseparable. So the future is, as I said, more prosperous, more democratic Turkey. And that's exactly what painfully we've been trying to achieve. Over the last decade or so, when I left my village, when I left my home to study in Ankara, later on to study in the UK, to work in, in the US and in the UK, if somebody had told me that Turkey would change so much in, this, you know, in, in terms of basically you know, getting rid of the old uh, policies, you know, providing fundamental rights and freedoms to all the ethnic groups, including Kurds. I would have been very suspicious. I mean, I, I wouldn't have subscribed to such a perspective. Today, if whatever Hispanic, that's the ethnic group in the United States, enjoy in terms of culture, religious, uh, political, in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, whatever, I mean, whatever comes to your mind. As a Kurd, or Kurds in Turkey enjoy the same thing. <coughs> the only barrier to a better coexistence is violence. We started the so-called reconciliation process a couple of years ago, and it had real chance to work. It did. And suddenly there was optimism. 
I represented a town during that period called Batman. It's in the southeast part of Turkey. That's where I was born. And it was a booming town. Exports have gone up by about 80 folds. I'm not exaggerating. Organized industrial zone was full of factories. Hope. But today, with the violence again back at play, it's a very different story. So the only way forward, we're not naive to think that we can solve problem by just killing terrorists. That's not a solution. Of course, we have to have public <coughs> order on the streets and in the region. But the way forward is, as I said, a more democratic and, and you know, boosting further fundamental rights and freedoms. I think had the Middle Eastern sort of developments not been the way, I mean, had that Syria issue hasn't evolved the way it has evolved today, we might have been at a different stage or different, talking about different things. <clears throat> we have no choice right now to deal with the violence because no democracy can tolerate violence. When, you, when there is violence, you cannot use your even basic rights, which is the case right now. So we have to deal with that, we have to contain that. But we are aware that it takes much more than that. And that's why we are seeking a constitutional reform. That's why we are seeking, you know, we're trying to make Turkey a more prosperous place addressing the regional development gaps. So, Bottom line is, um, I think the future would be bright for Kurds if they subscribed to a model that takes democracy, rule of law as the basis, rather than just simply resort to violence to achieve you know, this or that aim. Uh, in Iraq, everybody is talking about United Iraq. Everybody is talking about ultimately, you know, nobody is talking about uh, partition of Syria or partition of Iraq or partition of Iran or partition of any other country right now. I think the region, you know, had had enough of sectarian strife, violence, and ethnic violence. And the solution is not more violence. The solution is less of that, and more dialogue and obviously more reforms. But PKK, which is on the United States terrorist list, sadly failed to make use of the opportunity that we have extended, that we have done. Instead, they built more, uh, you know, they accumulated more ammunition, recruited more militants, and now they're trying to occupy parts of city centers by you know, digging, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't really, um, it doesn't bode well. So we're going to have to deal with this episode. But the work on Turkey's democratization, uh, the work on making sure that everybody is first-class citizen and enjoy, you know, a fair share of prosperity that is created is continuing. You know, as occurred today, uh, my parents were illiterate. They were illiterate. They couldn't speak a word in Turkish. They were farmers. Today, I'm the deputy prime minister of the same country. So nobody can tell me that, uh, you know, in the past, there were mistakes. But today, you can't say that the Kurdish rights are not provided for. We may not be perfect, but the channel to correct this is not more violence. It's actually at the parliament discussing. So thank you very much for your question. Yeah.